Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? today is we're going to we're going to patch together a a new instrument that is going to focus more on the uh, new pack that I just recently got uh, from Toy Box the sampling pack and we've dug into some of the samplers already, like the granular sampler, uh, the regular um, sampler, uh, or you know the sample player, the granular sample player. What I want to start looking at today is um, how we can utilize uh, some of the new sequencers and the uh, routing matrix uh, to. Um, well, a specific sequencer. So this one here, actually. And, yep, this is the one we want to use. And how we can use this along with the routing matrix to, um, to create some really interesting drum sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling these in here. And I'm going to pull in a few iterations of the drum module. So let's just duplicate this a couple times. And um, start getting these patched in. Now, what the routing matrix is going to allow us to do is, first off, is the, the sequence uh module is the same sequencer engine from the gate sequencer but each step now has its own output so i can now assign each of these eight steps to their own output and what i would want to do here is i would actually want to um i would want to connect each of these outputs <clears throat> to each step in the routing matrix because what that would then do is that would provide me eight steps that are triggered 100% completely within each of these columns. So let me show you what I mean. So now you see that I've got this first one connected. This first column is firing uh, every single time this fires. So, and it's not just this first row, it's every row in this column. So if you basically connect up all of the connections, if you just go ahead and just do a one-to-one, -one, you know, one-to-one, two-to-two, three-to-three, and just do all the connections here. Then, uh, oh, that's it, yeah. Then all of the steps will now run at each of the columns. Now, if I drag this up here a little bit, so let's do that. Let's get the um, clock and this kind of, yeah, it's a little difficult without it being on maybe a third row, but that gets them out of the way a little bit. Um, so let's now just move these to the same row as that. Here we go. Okay, so now what I can do is I can patch this in. So let's start, let's get a mixer. And 
let's go ahead and patch in the mixer. And the output here. Use our audio cables for purple. And then I'll just go out <clears throat> of each of these drums. I'm going to set the first one up to be like a kick. I'll set the second one up to be like a snare. And the third one up to be like a hi-hat, kind of. We'll start there. And all right. So we have three drum modules. Uh, now let's start patching them in. So I'm just going to trigger a uh, gate to the reset of each of these. So go back to our teal color. So out of one, we'll go to this first drum. Out of two, we'll go to the reset of the second drum. And out of three, we'll go to the reset of this third one. All right, now um, we can start clicking on because uh, now the the sequence is running for each of these steps. So the 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 steps we're focused on right now these first three rows because these first three rows are actually patched in. So let's start just clicking on the switches to turn them on and off and start hearing some sound. All right. So now I have these uh, these drums patched in. They're making some sound. Turn it down just a tad. It's a little running a little hot. Let's see, we want like a hat. Here we go. And relatively quickly, we have a uh, we have some drums going from the toy box from the new pack the sampling pack. Eleven. Let's actually move these down one because I'm going to duplicate the kick. It's another nifty trick, which is that I can kick and 
click and drag to turn on or turn off multiple uh, triggers at once. So it's very nice. All right, let's send this to the snare. And duplicate the kick. And um, we'll actually yeah, we'll move these as well. We'll take this one and move it now to then three. And remove the one for two so we can open it up. So now one is on one, this one is on three, and that one is on four. So we've opened up two for a kick. All right, so I'm going to get one more kick in here. Alright, so what, this is the one that's still connected? Okay. But... Which one is connected by... Okay, I see. I just need to connect this out to one. And we'll then connect this out to two. And then we just set up two for the different kick. And then we need to trigger the reset for two. There we go. Now we can mix the kick. So now one and two are two different kick sounds. So I have kind of a harder kick sound, sharper attack, and a kind of a deeper like sub 808 sound underneath it. <clears throat> and then we could put some effects in here. So... Let's get another mixer patched in. We'll patch effects into the mixer. Send it into number two, and then we'll just send the kind of the drum mix into the reverb. But now we can effectively turn the reverb completely off if we wanted to, and then just mix it in. So, I mean, they have a mix control here as well, but what we'd want to do is now set that mix control essentially to 100%.
It's pretty sweet. It'd be cool to have that tucked by a compressor based on like a side chain. So what I've done is I've set up a compressor and I'm, I'm sending an output from the kick drum into the sidechain input, which is now it's, it's firing the compression <clears throat> each time the kick happens. So what effect this will have is this will kind of tuck the volume of the reverb every time the kick happens. It'll have this kind of tucking effect, hopefully. Let's see. Nice. And you can adjust that with, obviously, the compression. Really cool stuff. Let's see what the multiband distortion does for us here as another effect. Let's patch this into number three. And we'll just turn number three down, but then we'll come out of the drum mix again just into here. And that way we can kind of mix in a distortion effect. So let's. Kind of tuck all this down a little bit and make number three something to listen to. Here much. Could be the way I have it set up, too. It's just not. Not wanting to work. Try this simpler one. Uh, patch this into number three as well. Same thing. Cool. 
So this third channel has some distortion. We can mix in. Clean it up by tucking it down. And then this one has like a tucked, like reverb compression thing happening. I think this is cool. Save this. <clears throat> and we'll probably use this one for <clears throat> adding on to it in the next one as well to kind of tie things together for the sampling pack. Until next time.